welcome back to Geek Stew, and today it is Monday, so happy Monday to you folks out there. Uh, I, of course, recorded this over the weekend, so today is not actually Monday for me, but I hope everybody's having a great day today. Want to make sure that you guys knew that I appreciate you, and that I hope you're having a wonderful, beautiful day today. Um, it, it is most likely cold wherever you are because it is November, <laughs> and uh, you know, this week's Thanksgiving, so before we get started with today's Geek Rants, I did want to give you guys a little bit of an update. We will continue to release our videos as normal this week. Um, Wednesday, we should have our Control Over Sleep podcast as normal. And then Friday, we should have our normal horror stew. Um, so everything should be good. I uh, just wanted to make sure that was out there for everybody to know. Because uh, I know that with holidays coming around, sometimes that can uh, mess up schedules and everything like that. So, but I appreciate everybody who uh, gives us a check and, you know, watches what we do and everything else. I do. I appreciate it. And I'm greatly, th I'm very thankful for that. So everybody stick around, have fun. But today we're on, we're going to do a Geek Rants. Um, specifically today, I'm going to go back to a Dragon Ball Z related Geek Rant, which is actually about probably one of the most universally disliked parts of Dragon Ball Z, uh, Dragon Ball GT. Now, my geek rant today is going to be talking about why I dislike Dragon Ball GT. I'm sure that there's a hundred reasons why Dragon Ball GT is not good, and there is. Um, but there are just some things that really irked me about the show, and I just wanted to go over just a few. Um, specifically, there are four things that I wanted to go over with you, with you guys. Uh, I'm not going to be too long-winded, and I'm not going to draw this out. But here are four reasons why I did not like Dragon Ball GT. Let's do it. First and foremost, we're going to start off with the fact that the this initial premise of the show is based around the Black Dragon Balls. The Black Star Dragon Balls weren't only pointless, but the, the story behind them just honestly was... It was plot armor, maybe. Um, so for people who haven't watched the Dragon Ball GT series, which I envy you, if you will. So during the series, uh, the, the initial issue that we run into is that uh, Emperor, uh, yeah, is Emperor Pilaf and his friends uh, accidentally turn, Go or they don't accidentally, they, they intentionally turn Goku into a child with the Black Star Dragon Balls. Um, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly, the Black Star Dragon Balls are like in some locked room inside of uh, the, out, the lookout. Um, but basically the Black Star Dragon Balls are essentially the same thing as the normal Dragon Balls, except for they have a couple of twists. Uh, first and foremost, the, the dragon is red instead of green, so Shenron's red. And uh, it grants a wish as normal. Uh, but it has a slight side effect of uh, causing the planet to explode if they aren't gathered within a year's time. So, yeah. So, uh, if I remember correctly, the... Uh, if I remember correctly, the, the purpose of this was that... Basically, it's supposed to be the antithesis of the original Dragon Balls or something like that. Or it, it was either that or it was like a, a, a failed version that Kami made. Because obviously the the Guardian of the Earth creates the Dragon Balls. And, and, and usually it's a Namekian. So Kami made the, the original Dragon Balls. But the original Dragon Balls were destroyed when he died. So uh, the, the new one, I can't remember his name now, made new Dragon Balls. But then somehow these... Black Star Dragon Balls were there too. I don't know. But irregardless, it just, these they seem like very dangerous Dragon Balls. And, you know, in the Dragon Ball C series, we've seen that you can destroy Dragon Balls without killing the Guardian. So it just kind of seems counterproductive to leave these lying around. I feel like you could have very easily just destroyed them and then moved on with your life. So to me, it just seemed like sort of a, sort of, it just seems very, uh, honestly, there's no reason they should have existed. None. Very stupid plot. Did not like. 10 out of 10 would not watch again, quite frankly. But that takes us on to our number two point, not like Omega Shenron. So I see what they were trying to do. Omega Shenron, you know, 
we know that power levels aren't really important. Um, and, you know, with the progression of the series, things like a power level, they, they diminish in value and in return. So obviously, as you go along, you know, we're just understanding that there are stronger and stronger, you know, universe and planet destroy, destroying individuals, you know, uh, these are people who can do that. So that being said, Omega Shenron was supposed to be the most powerful villain of the series. Uh, he basically had no personality. Um, let's see. There were, so let me start with that. So basically, Omega Shenron didn't have any personality. You know, basically, he was just this kind of like bland, water, plain milk, plain bread villain. And, you know, you have these other villains. And in comparison, you know, like, for instance, uh, Cell. Cell was very cocky. Cell was very sure of himself. Cell had this this air of wisdom about him, even though he was evil. Uh, for instance, Frieza. Frieza was, uh, as well, very, very, very overconfident. But he also had a complex because of, you know, the fact that, you know, he could he could transform. You know, he had a final form and everything else. So Omega was just tough and dangerous he he just had like this he was just strong um but he was basically why why power levels are so bad and why focusing just on the power of a character is not very is not as important as people should you know should should see or should think about um so that's just one of the other ones uh th reason three and maybe this is just me nitpicking but GT very specifically, in my for whatever reason, goes out of its way to ignore rules that were set in Dragon Ball Z. Now, obviously, I know, I know, I know the series is long. You know, you have all these different spinoffs and all these out show shoots. You know, eventually we're gonna see some inconsistencies and some you know bullshit like that. But basically, just GT just really rubs me the wrong way with that. So just a, just a couple things, because don't get me wrong, Dragon Ball Super has had a very similar issue, but not to the same extent, and also not to the extent of what they're doing is such a drastic difference or inconsistency. Um, for, for instance, uh, Vegeta's hairstyle. So basically, in the original Dragon Ball Z, Vegeta even says, like, hey, like, Saiyan's hair, they don't change, like your whatever hair you have is the same hair you'll have for the rest of your life but for some reason that's different in gt um gohan is a, another fr a frequent issue to that point as well um basically he can go super saiyan in gt despite the fact that he doesn't need that form anymore since he used uh, mystic form um so those are just my those are just two things so and there are others so there are others um, for instance, like the whole, uh, the whole aging process, cause you see this really drastic jump from, um, cause I know that obviously Saiyans age, you know, slowly and everything else, but somehow uh, there, there's a whole thing with, with aging too, that there, there's very large inconsistencies with, um, the amount of time between the series, uh, somehow Trunks is older than he seems to have been but he wasn't like for instance like in dragon ball super trunks is still a baby basically i mean he's still like a small child but like uh trunks and gt is somehow like almost a teenager like he's he's like almost a small adult i don't know the the timelines here are very very uh <clears throat> very inconsistent the, the 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 characteristics are very inconsistent and everything else so I, honestly it, it just frustrates me because you know you have such a great series of as dragon ball z and then you have dragon ball gt that's trying to build off of that and then dragon ball gt just doesn't right but last but definitely not least in fact i would say this is probably the main reason why i didn't like gt amongst other things um but they killed piccolo now, obviously, I, I know I've talked about why I love Piccolo. I think I did that like one or two weeks ago. Uh, but uh, yeah, so they basically killed Piccolo. But uh, Piccolo was 
one of the characters in the show that very rarely died, right? You know, Piccolo always had a way to kind of bring himself back from the brink, you know, and they, and they did that for a reason. That was who his character was, okay? So you, you see all these times that Piccolo got into a pickle. Huh, see what I did there? So uh, Pickle, Pickle, goddamn, Piccolo, you know, for instance, in the, uh, the Saiyan saga, you know, first and foremost, he almost dies when he was fighting Raditz. Raditz, you know, but he just got his arm cut off. Great. He did die when he was facing off against uh, uh, the other Saiyan, sorry, Vegeta and uh, Nappa. Yeah, I've not watched that forever. Anyways, the point here being is that in that in that series, he did die, but he died protecting Gohan. And then in the Frieza saga, he doesn't die. He does survive. Uh, Cell saga, he survives. Uh, Boo Saga, he survived, no, he gets absorbed, and then gets blown up on the planet, but that's kind of to be expected since everybody got blown up on the planet. <sighs> and even in Dragon Ball Super, he survives essentially every major issue or major, uh, outtake that happens, but for some reason in Dragon Ball GT, he dies and is just dead. So, it didn't sit with a lot of fans when it happened initially, um, basically, uh, so basically what happened was, is that they tried to do this weird connection bullshit where, like, <clears throat> and here's another thing too that I didn't understand is because if you would have killed, if you would have killed Piccolo, you would have technically killed Kami and that would have then destroyed the Black Star Dragon Ball. So they would have just stopped trying to see, trying to find those, um, Anyway, so I don't know. It seemed like a very weird plot point to put in there because that's what ended up happening is that they did that and then Pickle's like, don't wish me back so the Black Star Dragon Balls don't come back. But in theory, if they were destroyed and you brought them back and you brought Piccolo back, then the Black Star Dragon Balls would have also come back, but the Black Star Dragon Balls would have been essentially powerless because the, the wish period would have already ex expired. I don't know. But basically... Basically, he Piccolo went to heaven, and then he had to get him sent, himself sent to hell because Goku ended up there during the Super Android 17, but Piccolo couldn't get out once it got there. So Piccolo is not only permanently killed off, but was also essentially sentenced to eternity in hell. I don't know. So, like, it, just the fact that they had this bullshit plot, and not to mention... It, the original Dragon Balls were destroyed when Kami, quote-unquote, died when he was merged with P Piccolo. So wouldn't that have also destroyed? Because I remember that Dende had to create new Dragon Balls. I, I don't know, but I, it, this is at least what I think should have happened, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Um, also, I guess there's a bigger question about, like, wh where does Shinron draw his power? I think that's a question for a different day. But irregardless, I there are just so many inconsistencies with Dragon Ball GT, and I and I haven't watched it in a while. And when I started thinking about what I wanted to talk about today, this is something that I thought about talking about, and I was like, maybe I should watch Dragon Ball GT first. So I went through and watched a little bit, but it still just doesn't make sense to me. None of this makes sense. You know, these, these plot points of the Black Star Dragon Balls, you know, the, the very blatant, you know, ignoring of, like, past events and everything else. And then, of course, you know, there are some smaller details, um, such as Omega Shenron just kind of being bland. Like, I didn't really care for Omega Shenron, but, you know, that that is what it is. You know, he may be vanilla, but at least he was still there. But, you know, but then, even then, you know, you have such atrocities like Piccolo getting killed off, and it just doesn't make sense. They, you know, it's this whole roundabout, uh, you know, rigmarole that just doesn't make sense. So that being said, I'm going to stop ranting about how I don't understand things and uh, like an old person. And we're going to phase here into final thoughts. Final thoughts. So basically, uh, end of the day, uh, Dragon Ball GT is uh, not that great. So it's universally disliked, Dragon Ball GT, that is. And I think that it is very definitely worth that mutual hate between a lot of the Dragon Ball uh, Z and uh, whatnot fans. So, all I can say really is that Dragon Ball GT 
follows a very fine line of at what point does this become fan fiction um and i think that the big issues that we see get addressed in this do get addressed in dragon ball super you know the black star dragon balls or whatever they were basically they were just a joke and they turned just emperor peel off into children and whatnot uh irregardless i i think that there there is something that can be said about the fact that you know you have this all-powerful you know group of people and you know what happened i mean dragon ball gt just follows a very weird plot timeline where goku gets turned into a kid and everything else i don't know I didn't care for that, never really cared for the series, period. But then when I started looking into it in more detail, I found other inconsistencies that really just bothered me. Um, and including my favorite character getting killed off and being sentenced to eternity in hell because of some dumb shit. But irregardless, I'm not going to rant for too much longer. But if I had to give a rating to Dragon Ball GT as an overall within the series, I would give it a 2 out of 5. Two out of five, just because Dragon Ball GT fails in so many ways that it's just, it's just, it just comes to a point where you can't. There's nothing else you can do to uh, remedy the fact that what I'm watching is absolute dog shit. So, take it for what it's worth. It's just one man's opinion, but at least for right now, that's my geek rant. Um, of course, continue to subscribe, like, comment, share. The comments down, or I'm sorry, the description down below, as well as the end uh, title here, will have all of our social medias, our Facebook and Twitter. So go give us a follow, and uh, if you want to post something on there, go for it as well. Uh, but otherwise, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Next time, I'm going to do a little something different. I'm not going to do anime or anything like that, because I've done a lot of those. I'm going to do a little something different next week, uh, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, but hope you guys enjoyed, and as always... Stay happy, stay healthy, and keep on growing. See you guys.